In part one and two, we discussed the energy storing compound of the free fatty acid. We also described the storage form of these fatty acids or the triglycerides. In animals, those triglycerides are stored in specialized cells called adipocytes, part of adipose tissue. And the adipocyte is designed to take in these triglycerides and store these fatty molecules inside of the cytoplasm. And I'll expand up as we ingest more and more calories. And this is what makes us fat. This is a photomicrograph of an obese individual and you can see how big the cytoplasm is. It just pushes the nucleus to the side and just keeps getting bigger and bigger. How do we transfer the energy from the plant or one animal to another? Basically, that's done by eating. We ingest a high energy source like a piece of bacon and when we chomp down on that, we break open these adipocytes and these triglycerides come pouring out and they coat our tongue and the inside of our mouth and we say, Mmm, that is some good stuff. We like the taste of fat because that is our energy source. That's how we keep our bodies running. So it tastes good to us. These triglycerides are actually too big to be incorporated directly into our body. So they have to be digested and that's where the GI tract or the gastrointestinal tract comes into play. The food bolus, after being chewed, passes down through the esophagus and into the stomach. And once it hits the stomach, that fat actually causes some enzymes to be secreted that results in contraction of the gallbladder. and secretions from the pancreas because the bile salts from the gallbladder and the secretions from the pancreas begin the process of breaking down these triglycerides into a usable form that can be brought back into our bodies. This is why patients who have gallstones when they eat a fatty meal, fat causes the gallbladder to contract against those stones, these patients will feel pain. The gallbladder has a tube that comes out of the gallbladder sac and goes into the second portion of the duodenum. So once that food bolus hits the second portion of the duodenum, those bile salts come squirting out, the pancreatic enzymes come squirting out into the same general area, and they mix with that food bolus. These enzymes break up those triglycerides into smaller components that can be brought in through the bowel wall. These are basically the free fatty acids and monoglyceride. So you have one free fatty acid on the glycerol molecule and then the other ones are broken off as free fatty acids. These are small enough to make it through the bowel wall and then they are transported up to the liver via the portal vein. This is a big venous structure that drains all of the bowel and brings it right up to the liver, our main processing plant for all the foods and toxins that we eat, including alcohol. And that's why the liver can take a big hit if we eat too much or we drink too much alcohol, it usually affects our liver. Inside of the liver, these free fatty acids and the monoglycerides are reassembled back into triglycerides. And the triglycerides are then pushed into the transport vehicles that we discussed earlier, the lipoproteins. And there's the high density lipoproteins, the low density lipoproteins, chylomicrons. All of these are part of the lipoprotein system with that outer ring of protein. And it contains the fat and cholesterol on the inside. Now that these triglycerides have been packed neatly into the soluble transport molecules, the lipoproteins, they can be transported around the body. Some of them are going to go to the muscle cells where they can be used immediately for energy. The others are going to be stored in our adipocytes, the fat storing areas of our body. The lipoprotein deposits its triglycerides into the adipocyte. The adipocyte itself will expand up to accommodate the increased fatty stores and this is what makes us fat. So let's review. To assimilate energy into our body, the first thing we do is we eat. We chomp down on a piece of meat or some other kind of food, and that begins the process of breaking up these adipocytes. The triglycerides come pouring out. They go down the esophagus and hit the stomach. Once they hit the stomach, they stimulate certain chemicals to be released that cause the gallbladder to contract and the pancreas to secrete some enzymes that break up these triglycerides into smaller components, the free fatty acids and the monoglycerides 
triglycerides. These can then be brought up through the bowel wall and transported up to the liver via the portal vein. Once the components get to the liver, they are reassembled back into triglycerides, and then the liver is charged with pushing the triglycerides into the soluble transport vehicles, the lipoprotein, which then transports the fat either to the muscle cells or the fat storage of the adipocyte. Now imagine this, you're taking in a tremendous amount of energy. It could be fats, it could be carbohydrates, and you're bringing this in rapidly. All of these triglycerides are coming up into the liver and it can't pack it into the lipoproteins fast enough. So some of these triglycerides are going to spill out into the blood and it's going to increase your triglyceride level. If your triglyceride levels, your free triglyceride levels on your labs are too high, that probably means you're just eating too much. The liver can't pack these triglycerides into the lipoproteins fast enough so it spills them out into the blood. And these free triglycerides are what contribute to the metabolic syndrome and syndrome X and atherosclerotic disease and diabetes and all the problems we have with being overweight and eating too much fat. So if you see on your lab your triglycerides are too high, you need to back off. You're taking in too many calories. Mm -hmm.